Hi guys, this is my note about privacy rights as defined by the Charter with a couple of Canadian examples and specifically geared to your rights to privacy students in Canada in 2020. So just like our freedom of expression note, I wanted you to keep something in mind when we're looking at all the cases and examples here. So it's the individual's right to privacy versus the public's right to collective safety. So when should we eliminate somebody's right to privacy and how much should we respect everyone else's right to feel safe? So it's balancing that. That's going to be the question uh, I want you to consider and be considering throughout all of the cases. So the first thing I would like you to kind of know of and define is the actual privacy rights as defined by Section 8 of the Charter. And in the Charter, it states, everyone has the right to be secure against unreasonable search and seizure. So again, you can be searched and you can be seized. It just has to, it can't be unreasonable, again, unreasonable in quotation marks. So most searches in Canada require a warrant unless um, it's in your garbage or in plain view. So a police officer, police officer could see something illegal going on in your house through your window, for example. You're being arrested, you can be searched for weapons, or what's called exigent circumstances or in extreme emergencies. Um, you could enter a building because of an emergency. A police officer could kick down your door if there was a fire or they heard gunshots because the harm that would come from ignoring that is greater uh, than an individual's right to privacy right in that moment. Okay, this is usually an activity I would do uh, with my students where I would get them to put their heads down, close their eyes, and then I would play this clip. And I would ask them how it made them feel again, and describe your emotions. And it's a clip of students again, during the Parkland massacre shooting. Um, and again, often students feel scared and they're often pretty like easy to jump to the idea this is a school shooting, even with their eyes closed. Because they hear gunshots, they're in a school, that's automatically where their minds go to. And it's because of, again, Parkland, which again is the most recent kind of famous school shooting. Unfortunately, there's lots. Um, because of Parkland and the original school shooting, which kind of grabbed media headlines, the Columbine massacre, uh, these two events in particular change the way in which we kind of examine the rights of students in this building and your right to privacy inside of a school. Because I'll tell you right from the get-go, you have less privacy rights in a school as opposed to outside on the street. And that is defined by our law. And in Canada, there are two main cases, again, case law or judge-made law, where your rights as a student and your right to privacy in a school is clearly set out, like kind of the limitations, what you're, they're allowed to do to you and what they're not allowed to do to you. So this is RVAM. And when you see AM or an acronym, this tells you that the person involved in this crime was a young offender. So on November 7th, 2002 at St. Patrick's High School in Sarnia, Ontario, the police accepted a long-standing invitation by the principal of the high school to bring sniffer dogs into the school to search for drugs. The police had no knowledge that drugs were present in the school and would not have been able to obtain a warrant to search the school. While all students were confined to their classrooms, the principals told the students to leave their backpacks in their lockers. The students who had come in late uh, had to put their backpacks in the gym. After passing the lockers, uh, the officer then had the drug sniffing dog sniff the unattended backpacks lined up against the, gym the wall in the gymnasium. The dog reacted and bit one of the backpacks. Without obtaining a warrant, the police opened the backpack and found illicit drugs. They charged the student who owned the backpack with possession of marijuana, a psilocybin, not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly, and uh, for the purpose of trafficking. So after we look at this, should update this now, uh, why did the principal have an open invitation to the police? Why do you think a police, sorry, a principal felt it was a good idea to have this open invitation to bring drug sniffing dr dogs into the school? Uh, another thing I would like you to reflect about, how would your parents feel about this policy? Would they be okay with bringing a drug sniffing drug dog? Mine probably would. 
Um, this should say Mr. Haight now because Mrs. Volmer Ashley retired. Uh, how would Mrs. Vol again? How would you feel if Mrs. Volmer Ashley or Mr. Haight had a similar policy? Again, if this was going on at KCI, would you be okay with it? And lastly, do you think this would survive a charter challenge? Because it sounds like a pretty clear cut in violation of privacy, even though I've already told you, you have less privacy rights in the school. And the end result, the conviction was thrown out. Why? Uh, the police are entitled to use sniffer dogs based on, this is the key, reasonable suspicion, which they didn't have in this case. Uh, not to use the sniffer dogs to find that reasonable suspicion. So they can't just search you at random. There needs to be reasonable suspicion. Uh, teenagers can expect the contents of their backpacks not to be opened at random and to the speculative scrutiny of police. So this means, again, you do have some rights. You don't have unlimited rights, uh, but you do have Mike, some have, rights. Please call 5550. Well, continuing after that announcement. So you do have rights. They're just limited in this school. Okay, the second case, RV MRM, another young offender. A vice principal of a junior high school had been informed by some students that another, that another student, MR, had planned to sell drugs at an upcoming school dance. The vice principal asked MR and his friends to come to his office. The vice principal advised them uh, that he was going to search them for drugs. MR emptied his pockets and after being asked by the vice principal to do so, uh, pulled up his pant legs and there was a bulge in his sock. The vice principal removed a plastic bag of marijuana. An RCMP officer who had been called there by the vice principal according to school policy was in the office but did not interfere. So the entire interaction was being between the student and the vice principal. The bag was given to the police officer who advised MR that he was under arrest for the possession of a narcotic. The constable read the police caution to MR, his rights, and told him that he had the right to a counsel and a lawyer, and that he had the right to contact a parent or an adult. MR tried to reach his mother, but was unable to get in touch with her. He said that he did not want to call anyone else. The officer and MR then went to MR's locker and searched it. No more drugs were found. Okay, so my reflection questions. Should the VPs have the right to search student belongings? Again, is this an appropriate thing for a non-police officer to do? Is this a violation of Section 8? Again, is this an unreasonable kind of violation of your right to privacy? And do you think this would survive a charter challenge? Is this an unreasonable limit on your privacy rights? Again, to have a vice principal can search you. This conviction is upheld. So, and he was convicted. Why? The VP had reasonable suspicion. That was what was absent from the previous case. They had reasonable suspicion of drug possession. Administrators are also given the right to search student belongings because of the Safe Schools Act. So there is legislation in, in the Ontario government that gives vice principals the right to search your belongings. So again, some of you are already aware of that, unfortunately. Uh, administrators should be given also the flexibility uh, to quickly to react to dangerous situations i.e. a student is seen with a knife. Again, the vice principal needs, or the principal or whomever, needs to act quickly. Otherwise, something terrible could happen. So the reasonable suspicion threshold is actually much lower for a principal than a police officer. And that's something students often have a hard time wrapping their, hand, like their head around, where the vice principal in a school has more right to search you than a police officer outside of the school. And students should expect a lower level of privacy in school because the right for collective safety trumps the individual's right to privacy in schools. And lastly, this is another video I'd like you to watch. Uh, and this is kind of the end of this whole uh, saga. So RVAM and RVMRM dictate school policy when it comes to the privacy rights of students. And when it comes to these two decisions, often the interpretation can be up to the individual principal or vice principal. And this is an example of a strip search of a 15-year-old girl in a Quebec high school. 
And a lot of people believe this is the slippery slope. When we take rights away from students, this type of situation can happen and be very outrageous and wrong. So this is the last thing I would like you to watch and kind of form your opinions about your rights uh, as, a, again, as a student and your right to privacy. Okay, if you have any questions, make sure to ask them on Google Classroom or stop by the Google Meet, please.